Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the city of festivals. Today is the city of gymnastics as it welcomes some of the best junior gymnasts in the United States and the 11th Nastia Lukin Cup. Moments ago, Olympic champion Nastia Lukin spoke with our competitors. Hi everybody, I'm Nastia and I wanted to welcome you all to the 11th annual Nastia Lukin Cup. Congratulations to all the athletes and coaches who have qualified here today. You are all our next generation in the future and the brightest stars ahead. But today, remember, you are the best of the best. So I just wanted to wish you all the very best of luck. Nastia Lukin. NBC Sports presents the 2020 Nastia Lukin Cup. Welcome inside the Five Serve Forum. Lately, it's been the focus of the NBA world, but they step aside and we focus on athletes of a different stature. It's women's gymnastics and the Nastia Lucan Cup. The athletes are on the floor, they're warming up, and they are ready to go. John Roethlisberger alongside Olympic champions Nastia Lucan, Tim Daggett. Nastia, 11 years. It's, it's amazing how, how fast it goes by. What has this competition meant to you? Oh, it's so amazing. And you know, it all started with just this crazy idea and this dream. And so 11 years later to be able to every single year come back here, walk into this arena, sea of pink, you're wearing it. Tim didn't quite get the memo this year. It's okay, maybe the 12th year it'll work. We'll work on that. It's just, it's a pinch me moment for sure. So Tim, I figure it's a perfect segue to go to you and, and talk about how we break down this competition and the leotards, your, your area of expertise. Well, it is 36 gymnasts that are competing, 18 seniors, 18 juniors. The seniors are wearing mostly black, a little bit of pink. The juniors have mostly pink on. But I tell you what, this Nastia Lucan Cup, it is a hot ticket. Invitationals all across America, these young ladies go to travel to, and they want to get here to experience this, and it's going to be exciting. And you absolutely can see it on their faces when you talk to them before the meet. They are just so pumped to be here. And there have been a lot of great gymnasts that have come to this competition and gone on to fame in the sport of gymnastics, especially collegiate gymnastics. And most recently, none other, no more notable than Nia Dennis, this young lady right here, Nastia. See, this is the 2012 Nastia Lucan Cup, her breakout performance right here. I think, I think this was a competition that really set her up to go viral this year. <laughs> And that is exactly what happened. Last year was Caitlin Ohashi that went viral. This year, Tim, it's Nia Dennis at UCLA. And she rocked it with accompaniment of the Queen Bee, Beyonce. She worked it, and boy, can she tumble as well. Women's collegiate gymnastics in the United States has never been popular, and this has been a big part of that rise in notoriety. Even the celebrities are getting in on the act. Alicia Keys, Gabrielle Union, Ellen DeGeneres, and right down there, she said she needs to see it in person. I think we need to get these, these women out here she to come to get see, here. Come right see here. some gymnastics live because it is nothing better than when you're ringside. So we're gonna jump right into action. As Tim said, we have 36 gymnasts competing. We have 18 juniors, 18 seniors on all four events. This is an all-around competition. The seniors in the mostly black leotards, the juniors in the pink leotards. How do you pick, Nastia? How do you how do you break down the color scheme here? Well, you know, it was actually at the very beginning when we first started this competition, they were all in the same exact leotard, and that was for a reason. There was a purpose for me competing at the Olympic Games or really any competition that I represented the national team, we all match leotards, and that was part of the reason for this competition. I wanted to give these young women that opportunity to compete on a big stage, to feel like that they were really, truly part of something else than just themselves in, in their lives, in, in their home gym. Um, but then it got a little too confusing when there was 36 <laughs> in the same. So it I was broke confusing, it up. yes. I, I liked it, but you know, yeah. our producers didn't exactly love it. It was a little difficult, but and I this, think this works. And, <laughs> and this is a huge stage for these young ladies. Basically, the same stage that you compete on in the Olympic Games, the podium, the big lights. And we're going to start out with 17 year old Olivia Dunn. And she is one of the favorites coming into this competition. Highly touted, she'll be going to LSU next year, and she'll be a Tiger. And remember, this is J.O. rule, so it's out of the perfect 10.0. Very nice. 
nice start. Full twisting laid out Yurchenko. And you see her telling her coach a little. She on that horse didn't quite get the repulsion, the block, the height, but. Yeah, they actually get to do two vaults, and the higher of the two is the score they will use. So now we're gonna go right over to the uneven bars and our youngest gymnast competing, Zoe Malomo, 11 years old in sixth grade. I don't know about you, Tim and Nastia, but when I was in sixth grade, all I thought about was how to sneak Lucky Charms into my gym bag, and here she is on this huge stage, amazing. Yeah, it's a moment they all will remember for a very long time, if not forever. Starting on bars can kind of be tricky, especially for a younger athlete. Oh boy, just a little too close on that transition, the pack salto from the, the high bar to the low and her hand came off. Just the dismount right here, double tuck. Nice landing. And I have to, I have to say this because Zoe has come off the developmental camp. She's been sick. I talked to her coaches before the meet. They said she's under the weather, but she's feeling better today. But maybe that's shown a little bit on that bar team. Yeah, and as you said, you know, sometimes competing under those bright lights for the first time can, can throw you off a little bit. But what she did so well was she didn't let that fall earlier in the routine, throw off the rest of the competition. Beautiful double back there. Tiny hop. But, you know, I got to talk to them earlier today in the brunch that we had, and, and that's something that I really stressed so much, was that they have all already qualified here, and that is extremely hard to do. So I said, just try to go out here today and actually enjoy this experience. You know, obviously you're gonna be nervous. It's, it's a competition. Everybody wants to win, but you can't go anywhere from here. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you they, know? they really won the prize already. Absolutely. And that is, was a common theme in talking to the athletes. They just want to have fun. You'll see a lot of smiles on their faces today. Olivia Dunn. This was her second vault. Remember, they take the higher of the two. A Little bit of a hop on that. Maybe a little bit better bounce off of the table. 9.425 to get things started for Olivia Dunn. Yes, Sam. Yes, Sam. <laughs> Where's Craig? Let's go, Sam! A lot of cheering on the sidelines, which was great. We saw it in practice yesterday. Certainly going to see a lot of it today as well. Now, moving over to the floor exercise. This is 15-year-old Nikki Smith. Comes out of Eurostars Gymnastics. I think it's important to note, we said earlier, some of the very, actually the very best junior athletes in America. But if you are one of the best junior athletes in America, you can also 
be one of the best in the world, and that's a fact, because USA Gymnastics right now is the top program in the world from head to toe. Nice combination tumbling one right here, one and a half twist to a beautiful laid out somersault. And finishes with a double back, and, and this is so, something else that they have to get used to, this competition floor being up on a podium a lot of these athletes have never done that in the floor exercise for instance it, it's it's a little bouncier so when the adrenaline is high then i nerves, love the bouncy uh, floor i mean i do too <laughs> but it's just something to get used to zoe malomo 8.575 disappointing for her okay. but many great things to come for that young lady now shay campbell 18 years old She'll be a UCLA Bruin next year. She'll be out there with uh, the greats like Nia Dennis, we just saw in Floor Exercise moments ago. I'm a Bruin, John. I don't know if you knew that. Chris Waller, the first year head coach of UCLA, who's been there for a long, long time, doing a great job at that program. Nice giant swing there. Double front. Really pretty good. Solid. Doesn't give a lot away anywhere. Talked to her coaches before the competition. I said, what is she like? And they said one word, she's a gamer. And so far, that's exactly what she is. One for one for Shay Campbell. The score for Nikki Smith, a 9.475, so a decent start for her. We are underway here at the Nasia Lucan Cup. We'll have more from the first rotation around the corner. The Nasia Lucan Cup is brought to you by American Cruise Lines. Cruise close to home with American Cruise Lines. By Michelob Ultra, who reminds you to enjoy responsibly. And by Progressive Insurance, save when you bundle motorcycle, RV, and boat insurance. Visit Progressive.com today. So the score for Shay Campbell in her third Nastia Lucan Cup appearance, starting off on the bars with a 9.2. Now another junior competing here today. This is 12-year-old Rebecca Smith. She's from World Champions Center. We know that gym well. Where the greatest in the world hails from, Simone Biles. And you know, that was another great start. A little bit not as powerful <laughs> as we are used to seeing some of those senior athletes. You know, some of these little juniors coming out here don't have that power, the strength. Well, she's so young. But they young. have the, yes. 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 <laughs> and they definitely have can you the imagine energy and the, the smile the, and, and the enthusiasm. The oh, thing that strikes me though, so this girl, trains at the same gym that the greatest of all time trains. She, I'm sure, sees her repeatedly. She gets to watch magic as it's actually occurring, not, not the result at the competition. It's just, I, I can't even imagine 
what she feels like about that. Full twisting double was her first tumbling pass. And you know, she doesn't, as Nastia, you mentioned, doesn't have a lot of power, but this is a lot of gymnastics tucked into one piece of air. Does a really nice job. Chest is a little down. So as, as we kind of mentioned, the, the 10.0, which, you know, to be completely honest, I missed that scoring system a little bit. But as you <laughs> see, the perfect score, 10.0, 9.975 to a 97. Excellent. Just one minor error. And, you know, so far we haven't quite seen that yet. But 9.6 to 9.4, it's good. And below a 9.3, it's average. And, and that's still a good score. But the athletes here that have qualified, if you take a look at their qualifying scores, they were just so high all across the board that no one can really go under a 9.3. They don't look happy, right? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> awesome. Rebecca Smith, a 9.525. And now one of the competitors that's competing in her fourth Nastia Lucan Cup. This is Lolly Dekanoidza. Comes from Southeastern Gymnastics Center, 11th grader. Yeah, really solid set right there. Good gymnastics, she's showing it off. Gymnastics runs in the blood. In her family, her mom represented the country of Georgia on their national team. Not Georgia, USA, but Georgia and Europe. Thanks for clarifying, Tim, because I thought that was right next to Tennessee for a second. I'm here to help. As did Sarah. <laughs> We will wait for the score for Lolly. Nice combination tumbling pass right here. Round off back handspring. Really difficult two and a half twist and then immediately rebounds into that front flip. Nicely done. And this final pass, a very similar pass, two skills in a row. One full, less of a rotation, just a one and a half twist to a front layout, but a great routine, difficult tumbling. 9.55, a solid score for Lolly Dekanoidza. We are only halfway through the first rotation. Some of the favorites yet to come. Show me grips. Welcome back to Pfizer Forum at the Nastia Lucan Cup, the 11th rendition of this great event. We are partway through the first rotation. And for these young athletes, one of the greatest things, not just being on the floor, Nastia, but it's to get the stuff and get the leotards that you design. It's the big reveal. <laughs> and 11 years later, I mean, at least for me, it's just as exciting. And um, it was it's just so much fun for them, I think, to be able to see the leotards every single year. And, I'll obviously always have to be pink. This is Livy Dunn. She, you know, used to be an elite gymnast national team member and she qualified and texted me. She was like, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. <laughs> she actually modeled one one year for GK, one of the Nasty Lucan Cup leotards, and so she was very excited to actually get her own this year. That's pretty cool. I never got something like that that was that cool when I was a gymnast, but I remember the first J.O. team I made, that first warm-up you get. I tell you what, that is, that's like a great moment. So much fun. 
gymnasts are in the middle of the first rotation, so they're warming up the second half. They get a one-touch warm-up before they compete. Make sure they're warm and ready to go. So we're gonna start off here on the uneven bars with Zoe Johnson. And I have to tell you, I had a chance to sit and watch practice yesterday, and I sat at bars. And it's a good event to get an idea a little bit about these athletes. And this young lady put a smile on my face more than any other athlete. She is not a big person. She's just 14 years old. But she gets up there and she swings like she's the biggest person in the room. So much fun to watch. And not just the way she swings, but watch every time she hits that handstand. It is just so sharp, so crisp. She is a petite young lady, though, I'll tell you. One of her preschool teachers noticed how good she was, excellent balance, and she talked to the parents, and they said, well, let's try gymnastics, and it was a fit. Great start. So there's that handstand I was just saying. Exactly what the judges are looking for. Beautiful pack salto. So this is a perfect example. We're seeing somebody very young who has, you know, amazing potential. Without question, big dismount, double laid out somersault. Just the step on the landing, but I'll tell you what, she has got the goods and could definitely, we could see her on the international stage someday. Keep an eye out for young Zoe Johnson. You saw our coach, Stephen Manis from Bull City Gymnastics. Without a doubt, and Tim, as you mentioned, you know, it's so important to have those basics right there. You see that handstand. Not only what the judges are looking for, but that's what you need in order to progress to that next level, in order to, you know, raise the level of difficulty, being able to have that perfect position right there is just, it's, it's so important. Double laid out somersault. When you keep your body straight like that, it's so hard to generate enough rotations to flip two times around. She does an excellent job. A little bit under rotated. Has to take that step forward, but wow. The big stage is not too big for Zoe Johnson. Now we move over to the vault. This is Gabby Perea, former elite gymnast from Legacy Elite in Illinois. Gets her day started on the vault. Yeah, she really has had a number of injuries. Such a beautiful gymnast, though. Gorgeous, full twisting. Laid out, Yurchenko. That is probably going to be the biggest number we have seen tonight. She truly was just astoundingly gorgeous as a senior athlete. Oh, just stunning on yes. every single event, and especially even right here. Just take a look at the body and the form in the air, just picture perfect. Just uh, not, not even really a hop. That was like kind of a slide back. <laughs> <laughs> she, will, she will be a Cal Bear next year as she moves on from high school. Score for Zoe Johnson, 9.4. Nice start. Yeah. Come on, you got this. Come on, you got it. Go, you got this. Go, Come on. You know, they're, at, at least they're all listening to me because at the brunch today I said, please, everybody just cheer for each other, have fun. <laughs> you think they wouldn't listen to you, Nastia? <laughs> of course they well, are. Well, sometimes, you know, competition starts and you just forget. This is one of the favorites for the junior competition. This is Madison Ulrich, second all-around here at the Nastia Cup last year. Oh, and that is such a shame. So difficult and so well done. Full twisting double with legs straight, a pike position up. Oh.
such a great recovery. Unfortunately, that opening tumbling pass when the competition is just so tight, this will probably put her off the podium this year. Just so tough to even say that from the first oh, event, yeah. but it's just a bummer. Yeah, it really is. It's so hard. It's so well done. This mount right here, this full twisting double in the pike position, this could hold up in an Olympic finals. I, I'm totally serious. That was so well done. Just a little bit too over-rotated, has to sit down. But ended very well, double pike. And Tim, you mentioned, you know, Olympic finals. I mean, that's, that's a tumbling pass that we would <laughs> see there as well. So great, strong routine, but just so unfortunate with the fall on that opening pass. A tough way to start the competition, but three more events to go for young Madison. Gabby Perea, very nice, 9.775. That will put her in great position after one rotation. I thought that might have gone just a little bit higher, but very nice job. But they've been a little strict yeah. with the scoring here. Yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> and there is Madison Ulrich's score, 8.825. You never know in the junior competition, you don't give up until that last routine yeah. is done. A lot can happen, a lot of gymnastics yet to go. Now, very excited to see this young lady. One of the favorites as well today, J.C. Vohr. Comes out of J.C. Phelps Athletic Center in Indiana. years ago this year, a young woman walked into J.C. Phelps Olympic Champions Gym for the grand opening. They shared a name. It was J.C. Ten years later, here she is competing on this huge stage as a level 10. And ironically enough, they both got their name the exact same way. The initials of their parents, J and C, is how each of these J.C.'s became J.C. Pretty cool story. And there is Olympic Champion J.C. Phelps right there. That sounds like a little meant to be. Yeah, destiny. Yeah. JC described her as this little muscle that walked into that gym that day, and she said, this young, young girl is going to be outstanding gymnast someday, and she was absolutely right. And there is the score. Nice start, 9.675. We'll put her in a good spot after one. Andrea Lee, we saw, she vaulted moments ago, and here's what happened. Also another one of the favorites, I would say. Very powerful athlete, comes from a gymnastics family as well. Beautiful, full twisting laid out, Yurchenko. And that's something she is just so great at all across the board, the beautiful body positions. You see her hips completely open all the way to the ground. Score for Andrea Lee, 9.65. Now another junior competitor, this is 13-year-old Lily Bruce. She comes out also out of World Champions Center in Texas.
Double laid out somersaulted. I'll tell you what, a landing like that on that skill, that, that is very painful. That is too bad. Two very big mistakes. She just was a little bit gassed. I'm just happy that she looks like she's okay because that double layout, oh, ouch. So tough start for Lily Bruce, World Champions Center. We are through one rotation here at the Five Serve Forum in the Nastia Lucan Cup Finals 11th rendition. Your senior finals after one rotation, Gabby Perea after that vault has the early lead. When we come back, we're gonna get a special guest in the booth. Don't go away. Interested in getting involved in gymnastics? You can begin your gymnastics journey by going to thesportsengine.com. Here you can find program information of local clubs in your area. Go now. Here are your standings after one rotation. Gabby Perea has the early lead. Defending champ, or former champion rather, Haley Bryant in the second spot. We promised you a special guest here in the booth. We have the Women's High Performance Director, Tom Forster. Tom, you know, it's the year of politics, it seems like, so why don't we start out with the State of the Union in U.S. Women's Gymnastics? Well, we're in good shape. It's only March, but uh, the team is looking really good. Everybody's excited for the Olympics. If there's something that you could pinpoint about this year, obviously the Olympic Games, but what is it exactly that excites you the most beyond just the Olympics? Well, uh, probably the depth of the team. There were just, I mean, the team in 2016 also, that field is really strong. It, it seems like we're just as strong, maybe stronger. We have a few more. So the energy at all the training camps is really high, and that's really exciting, because I think it's also gonna take us into 2021. Who got the hardest worker award at the last camp? Simone Biles. And what is that The GOAT. Can you believe that? What is that like to be in your position, to have the opportunity to be in charge of the program of the world's greatest gymnast that's ever lived? What is that like? What does she bring to the table? Well, she raises the level of everybody tries harder because she not only is the best, she actually works the hardest. I mean, she's never cuts back on any of her routines. So she's an inspiration of how you should work anyway for the younger athletes. But you know, clearly because her difficulty is so high and she does it so well, we, it gives us such an advantage. Uh, it, it makes my job easier. <laughs> Well, you're doing a great job, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Tom, thanks. for joining us. If we had more time, I'd ask you about Simone training for 2024, but we'll save that for the next okay. one. Okay, all right. Good luck this year. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. We've got lots more gymnastics to come. Rotation number two coming up. Welcome back to the Nasty Lucan Cup. One rotation is in the books. There's three more events to go. Shay Campbell getting ready to go on balance beam. Gabby Perea with the early lead, but honestly, it doesn't mean much yet. Shay Campbell had a bit of a rough start on the uneven bars, put up a 9.2 there, so she's a bit out, but again, you guys know as well as anyone, so much gymnastics yet to go. Everybody's gotta go through the balance beam too, so that's the great equalizer. Absolutely, not just that, but you know, so many years in a row, I feel like it's it's always come down to that final event, the final competitor, and it just, it's, it's basically not even like half a tenth sometimes. Yeah. It's awesome. Very, very exciting, and I'm sure it'll be the same way this year. Nasty, when you t look at that shot right there, down the four inch wide balance beam, do you break into a cold sweat? Because I, I don't know how you guys do this event. I feel like 
for the first time ever. Yes. Now that you've asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had Never. her, if you had her ear right now, what would you say to her? I would say exactly what I told them this morning when we were talking about nerves. And I said, it is so important to try to just stay as positive as possible. And I said, you know, sometimes that's so frustrating when people tell you, just think positive. What does that mean sometimes, you know? And so I kind of gave them a few tips on, for me, what I like doing was going through each of my elements. And instead of being afraid to make a mistake or afraid to fall, trying to tell yourself, okay, how do I make this front flip, for instance, the best that I possibly can? What do I need to do in order to stick that landing? Great. Oh boy, wow. Very difficult flip flop step out to a layout to two feet. You land on two feet, much trickier on that skill. She kept a pretty good body shape throughout the element. Great connection there. You know, she started off a little shaky, but got that confidence back, got back on track, and did very well. Beautiful dismount. Yes, yeah, she did. Like you said, she had a bit of a struggle right here on this front flip. Holds on, though, and that was a great save. Into a little dance move there. <laughs> Always just trying to test the judges. You know, were you really paying attention? Because that was really just a dance move, is what you want to say. That was intentional. <laughs> So our second look at Rebecca Smith. We saw her on the floor to size. She put up a 9.525 there. Wow. That was really impressive. I'm pretty sure one of you guys said something about having not that much power on floor, but I think she's I think she heard you guys. Wow. I mean that that is amazing. You know, a lot of times the, the, the very young gymnasts and the super light ones are so light, they can't bend the board down and up here to generate enough power, but she sure does. And she's got fantastic technique though. She reaches back hard with her hands, has a good open shoulder. And because of that, she is able to just rock it off of that table. Watch right here, so quick and boom. Guarantee you, she's definitely training a double at home. Wow, that was spectacular. Rebecca is in the fourth position, actually tied for fourth after one rotation. And that smile on that face right there might just tell you that she's going to maybe even move up from that spot after two rotations. 9.675 outstanding. Pretty good. Pretty good. Very, very exciting. Your second group on board. Yeah. Just had to maybe land a little better, and this is her second vault. But she, boy, does she fly, huh? She really does. Tim, you know, you, you mentioned the boards. I feel like that was always my biggest nightmare at getting to any competition, because the boards just always felt so hard. It was hard to break those in. We always waited for the men to get through their training. 9.725, a little bit better on that second vault. <laughs> Lolly Dekanoidza will be the next gymnast to go on vault. She is a senior competitor, obviously. As you know by the leotard, competed on floor exercise already, put up a 9.55 there. Currently keeps her just inside the top 10 in ninth place. Oh boy, that's a full and a half twist. And because we are using J-O rules, that actually doesn't start out of a 10. It starts out of a 10.1. So she can actually have the smallest of errors and still get that coveted 10.0. I don't think she's going to reach that here, but very nicely done. You know, so it's that extra half twist, which doesn't really sound like a lot, but when you're landing to your, your back facing that vault, you really have to have that right technique. You have to spot the landing. 
I feel like in 2008, I saw someone do that vault almost <laughs> perfectly on the way to an Olympic all-around gold medal. I think it was perfect, and that was pretty darn good, too. Her second vault. 9.8, you talked about that extra 10th bonus, Tim, and you can see it pays off right there big time. So just has to try to put it to the floor and don't move the feet. She's already got a great score, going oh! for it! Oh, it, we could have history here. There has never been a 10.0 at the Nastia Lukin Cup, and that could be it right there. Judges, just do it. They should, I, I think that they should. The namesake of the competition just said, just I do it. I give her a 10. <laughs> wow, this was spectacular. I said all she needed to do was come away with a better landing, and this gets dangerous right here. Look at this, blind landing as we had said, and just bam, don't move those feet. I, I mean, I'm, I'd be speechless if this isn't a 10. Uh-oh, we can't have that. <laughs> I will march down there to the judges. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of having two vaults though, right? Yes, absolutely. She got a great score, 9-8 on her first one. It enabled her to go for this tricky landing, and no! Oh. Oh. Nastia will not talk the rest of the competition. <laughs> Lali Dekanoite flirts with history. 9.925 on that ball. Our leader after one rotation is Gabby Perea. Now she moves to the uneven bars. And as we saw her coming up in the lineup, Tim Daggett said, oh, this is going to be good. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, she can give a clinic here. Just beautiful lines, incredible handstand positions and just the control that she has. Watch this right here. Gorgeous transition from high to low called a pack salto. Coach is right there. That coach happens to be her. Li Uejo, Olympic medalist for China. Really nice dismount. Double laid out somersault, small step on the landing, but a great job. It seems like uneven bars is a big hurdle for these athletes. If you're gonna win, you gotta put it together on bars, and she just got over that hurdle big time. Well, you know, that event is just, there's so much room, typically for air, all those handstands, the release moves, but she- Look at it right there. Yeah, that, it's just like picture, doesn't give away much. Like I said, she could put a clinic on. And look at this. This one's a little bit past, just a little, but still, watch how she floats in the air right here. And then once again, going back down. Gorgeous. But just in every single thing that she does, whether it's just a cast a handstand, a giant, a difficult skill, a dismount like this, her body position is just beautiful. That, that's, that is the way a double layout should be performed. Stretched. Hips all the way to the end. Great stuff. Great job for Gabby Perea. After two, she's going to be in a great position. Now our first look at Selena Harris. She was sixth place after the first event, 16 years old, out of Jim Cats Gymnastics in Las Vegas, Nevada.
Beautiful. Love that. So much energy, so much power in that exercise. She competed at the 2018 USA Gymnastics Championships in the junior division. Really good though. The turn was good. I know you felt a little off, but it was it was nice. Made it work. And the way I need to spend time. That was a cool turn combination right into that illusion, right? Gabby Perea, a 9.475. We'll see how that holds up for her. We are halfway through the second rotation. When we come back, we'll get our first look at the 2018 champ, Haley Bryant. Two-time world champs, known for his flips on the ice, but you will not see Nathan Chen do a backflip at the upcoming world championships this month. The reigning champ, the quad king, Nathan Chen, looks to defend his crown against the world's best skaters. The World Figure Skating Championships from Montreal, March 18th on NBC and NBCSN. That will be exciting. Nastia, you, you have this kind of taller, you know, figure that a gymnast generally doesn't have. It looks like it would have been perfect for figure skating. You ever think about it? But my first issue is just I hate the cold. <laughs> but I, I think I would have loved the figure skating costume. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, think of what you could have worn. I know. Trust me, I have. <laughs> but it is, it's definitely my favorite sport to watch, for sure, in the Winter Olympics. Definitely a popular Winter Olympic sport, much like uh, women's gymnastics in the summer. Nastia, the Olympics coming up. Uh, does it? Can you believe it's been 12 years since you've competed? Doesn't it seem like yesterday. You're just trying to make me feel real old. Well, no, I'm gonna make Tim feel old. That's my <laughs> next question. But, but you know, what do you think as you come up to another Olympics? Is it kind of nostalgic for you? Yeah, it definitely is. I think also because it's it's not a huge part of my day-to-day -day life anymore as it used to be. I'm not in a gym every single day. So being able to come to events like this throughout the year and, and especially it being an Olympic year just kind of brings you back into those feelings. You know, I'm sure both of you know too what you were thinking. You know, it's, it's well, you it know, was beginning so of the year. It was so long ago for me, Nasia, I can't really remember. Oh, I, I doubt that. I doubt it. I am sure you remember the nerves, the, <laughs> the excitement. No, you know, I do. I'm joking. That year when it's it's your Olympic year and it's January, you know, it's, it's the, the top of the year, it's, it's an exciting time for sure. So JC Vore, the little muscle, as she will now be known as, thanks to JC Phelps. <laughs> She's going to love that. Yeah, she is going to love that. Fourth place after one rotation. Here she is on the vault. Most popular vault we're seeing from a lot of the gymnasts, that full twisting laid out, Yurchenko. There's the full and a half, though. Another 10.1 start score for that. So she had a little movement of the foot, but she it was did. really clean. You guys make, yeah. make the call. Yeah, this I, I would say it was a little cleaner than the first gymnast we saw do this. It, it probably, if that comes in 985 or higher and she's able to stick the second one, I don't know, maybe it'll happen. So. There's been a handful of gymnasts that have won back-to-back -back world championships or repeated at world champs. Simone Biles, Shannon Miller, Vitaly Sherbo for the men, but no gymnast in the history of the Nastia Lucan Cup have ever repeated as champion. Haley Bryant won in 2018. I want to see if she can do it again here. It would be history.
I'll tell you, that first tumbling pass, man, did she sky that handspring double front. Wow. And you know, we've, we've talked about how some of these athletes haven't really been in a setting on a podium under the bright lights, but that's definitely not the fact for Haley. She's competed here before. She has that competition experience, and, and you can kind of just tell. Wow. JC49.975. Oh, man. Wow, history not yet made with the first perfect 10 at the Nasi Lugan Cup, but you cannot get any closer than that. Wow. Living up to the reputation as a favorite for this all-around title is J.C. Bohr. Now, Andrea Lee, also someone who has won this competition. She won it as a junior, though, so she would be the first to win as a junior and as a senior. That was a physical of As we talked about on, on vault, but even more so here, you just see the beautiful form flies so high on those release moves. Tell you, the judges on bars, though, have been very tight tonight, but this is pretty flawless. Very difficult dismount right there, named after the great gymnast Fanny Lin. And she struggled with that in podium yesterday. I watched her do it a couple times, and the landing was not clean. That one outstanding. This, this should be a very big number, very, very big. Th no visible errors up until the dismount where maybe she lands with her chest down a little bit and has to take that step, but wow. Just gorgeous. See right there, just right on top of the bar, exactly what the judges are looking for. Really, it's picture perfect. Legacy Elite known for their bar works. Look at the flight on that. Huge. Here's that dismount, John. You said she struggled a little bit in training, but that's also what makes her so great is in competition. She just knows how to block out all any and all issues that she has had in training and can deliver when it counts. Like her teammate Gabby Perea, Andrea Lee will be attending Cal Berkeley next year. That is going to be quite a tandem coming in as freshmen. Look out. UCLA, Tim, your alma mater could be uh, in for a battle with the, the Cal Bears, 9.625. Yeah, I think that's the biggest Andrea number Lee. we've seen tonight on bars. I'm gonna stay right here on the uneven bars. Olivia Dunn, 13th place after that first rotation. Saw her on the vault where she put up a 9.425. So far, beautiful, too. And yeah, we've seen some great technical gymnastics on bars today. Just needed that, you know, that's all that's missing, really. Just gorgeous routine, beautiful handstands. Some words from our coach, Craig Zappa. So two down for Olivia Dunn, putting herself in position, trying to just slowly work up those rankings with two events yet to come. So moments ago, Riley Mundell, the 18-year-old from Parker, Colorado, competed on the floor exercise. Eighth place after the first rotation.
as we just said that was moments ago, but great routine for Riley. 9.525 as we mentioned, eighth place after one, keeping herself in the mix in contention. Olivia Dunn, nine, nine, very nice 9.55 for her on the uneven bar. She'll move to balance beam next. Yeah. I would say that should move her up. <laughs> And Haley Bryant, 9.675. She was in the second spot after one rotation, trying to keep her hopes alive. She does of having a second all-around title. No one's ever done it here at the Nastia Lucan Cup. Now we're going to take another look at a junior here. This is McKenna Carnesi from Colorado Gymnastics Institute. Comes out of the same gymnastic club as Riley Mundell. Another solid floor routine, and you saw her teammate <laughs> and still is cheering her on on the sidelines, jumping up and down. Dancing along, I love yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, doing the choreography with her. Getting ready for college, that's what they do <laughs> on the side of the floor. Nice performance from McKenna Mc McCarnese. <laughs> She's more excited for her. Than <laughs> She's like, I'm just trying to catch my breath here. <laughs> And talking to their coaches, that's exactly how they describe Riley Mundell, a true team player. But right now, halfway done, JC4, 19.65. She's got the lead after the, at the halfway point. Beginning July 24th, 2020, the Olympics, Olympic Games return live from Tokyo on NBC. The Ariaki Gymnastics Center in Tokyo looks just about ready for the athletes to show up in artistic gymnastics. 42 medals will be presented under that roof. You guys will be there. Yeah, it's actually kind of intimate for a gymnastic stadium during the Olympic Games. Looking forward to being in a packed house and seeing some of the greatest gymnastics that has ever been done before. It'll, of course, be headlined by Simone Biles and the dominant Team USA on the women's side, for sure. That should be a good one, and we got a good one here at the Nastia Lucan Cup in Milwaukee. JC Vore, that young lady, is in the top spot. She's halfway done, but it is a tight one. Welcome back to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. John Roethlisberger, Nastia Lucan, Tim Daggett here at the 11th Nastia Lucan Cup Finals. And it's JC4 right now leading the standings. Lolly Decanoids are right behind her. And those two young ladies, Nastia, put up the biggest scores of this competition so far on the vault on any event. And they flirted with that 10.0. Not only did they flirt with it, but they actually each received a 10.0 from one of the judges. So, you know, I, I didn't exactly get it wrong when I said that they should have awarded them a 10, but just absolutely beautiful form. Exploded off of that table. I thought, I thought she was actually gonna get this right here. 
That's yeah, that's Decanoidza. Absolutely, that's Gymnastics 101. Fly high and stick the landing. Tim, I've been waiting for it. She did that. We got halfway through this competition before we got to fly high and stick your landing. So there is JC Vore warming up on the bars. Joked around a little bit with JC Phelps yesterday as JC Vore was not having a great bar workout. And I looked at her, I'm like, what? Well, you told me she was, you know, going to win this thing. She goes, don't worry about it. She doesn't <laughs> win warm ups. And so far, she. Hit the nail on the head. You know, it, just as cool as it might be for JC to be coached by JC, for me to see JC Phelps here is just as cool because she was one of my idols. The 96 Olympic Games were the first games that I just really fell in love with gymnastics. I remember sitting at home watching the Atlanta Games thinking, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to be on that gold medal podium listening to the national anthem one day. The Magnificent Seven. And they were magnificent. Some amazing athletes. I was inspired by the 84 team, Tim. You were on that team. But my question is, who inspired you? Um, well, a guy named Peter Corman. He was from the same state as I was. He won a medal at the 1976 Olympic Games. I couldn't believe that somebody could do that from Massachusetts. And you had to go and one-up him, didn't you? Win the gold. So now Lolly Dekanoids is second place in the all-around halfway through this competition. We saw that big vault moments ago. She also started the event on floor exercise with a 9.525. So now uneven bars. She's got a finish on balance beam. A long way to go for this young lady. So once again, you want to look at handstands. Of course, you got to catch those releases and stick the landing. That was nice. Handstand position, just the dismount right here. Oh, great! What, what do you think, Nasty? Is that gonna is that gonna keep her in that top spot, top three? Yeah, I, I think it will certainly keep her in the top three. But you know, it's once we get down to that final event, she's definitely gonna be going back to every single landing that dismount on bars that she did right there. Could possibly, not saying it will, but it could possibly cost or be the difference between first and second place. So once again, great handstand right there. And look, at she just floats right up to that handstand again. And then transition from low to high, gorgeous. And it is an incredibly close competition from first to seventh place. It's just four tenths of a point. So really any one of those athletes, and who knows, maybe even someone behind them, is going to get the gold medal here. Double laid out somersault. Really great routine. Great handstands. Good releases. Small hop on the landing. Should be another big number right here. So for Lolly, 9.625. Actually ties the highest uneven bar score through two rotations. I think they got that right. Now we move back over to the vault. Raina Light, the 14-year-old out of Golden City Gymnastics. The leader for the juniors after two rotations. Oh boy, <laughs> kind of high on the table. Didn't really get a good block because her center of gravity, it rose too much from the board to the table, and then she really doesn't have a great reach for the horse as well. It all really starts right here from the round off. You want to get your feet under a little bit more, stretch further back. You see her elbows a little bit bent on the table as well. Timmy mentioned it. She's in first place right now for the juniors in the all-around. Actually put up the highest score out of juniors and seniors on floor exercise in the last rotation with a 9.825. But she's gonna wanna really improve on that 9.2, and she has the ability to do that. Let's see if she can turn that round off over like Nastia said a little bit more, maybe a little more speed. It was better, definitely better. Uh, you know, might get a little bit more score-wise, 
you know, it felt that that first part was a little bit better onto the table, but she rushed a little bit. Needs to be a little bit more patient to... Her step seemed a little spread out there. Still a little high on the table, arms a little bit bent, but certainly better than, than that first ball. The junior competition also very close. Three tenths separate the top three athletes. Rebecca Smith, Zoe Johnson right behind Raina Light. So that 9.2 puts her in a precarious spot. I thought that was gonna be a little better, just a little, but the judges didn't agree. <laughs> Selena Harris, tied for fourth place after the second rotation. Oh boy, that was ridiculously great. Wow, just a, a hugely powerful run down the runway and then just explodes off the table. Remember, once again, this is one of those 10.1 vaults. So I'm just wondering how many athletes it's gonna take for the judges to finally just give it to somebody. <laughs> well, sometimes that's what, it, that's what happens. They see a bunch of ones like this, but there's definitely a little bit of a hop right there. 9.875 for Selena Harris on that first vault. But it starts from a 10-1, so technically, if it was just the hop, yes. <laughs> she still could have gotten it. And now seventh place in the all-around currently, Gabby Perea, seventh place, but still very much within striking distance of first. And a lot of the top athletes still have to come to this event, the balance beam. Oh my goodness, back with a full. That is, that's world-class gymnastics. So difficult. She's been able to do that skill for a very long time and she's extremely consistent on it. A little off on that leap connection. And this is probably the most difficult beam routine that we will see out of the whole competition. She certainly doesn't need to be doing such a difficult routine, but you appreciate it, seeing skills like that that she's still obviously very capable of doing. Double twist to finish off. So the former, elite, the former elite gymnast showing some of those elite skills. Yeah, I mean, this is this is awesome right here. Backflip with a full twist. Some of the best gymnasts in the world would love to add that to their beam routine and do it just like that. I would have. Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult. Nasi, she talked about getting taller and that made elite gymnastics a lot harder. Did you go through something like that as, as a taller gymnast? I mean, I, I definitely did. I didn't quite get as tall as, as Gabby, but it's, it's a really tough adjustment. I mean, I... One summer growing five inches, basically feel like you have to relearn everything, especially on bars. Now here's Haley Bryant, third after two rotations. Another 10.1 start, and that was sky high. That was ginormous as I steal a word out of <laughs> Tim Daggett's personal dictionary. Wow. Really nice. You know, it's, it's so refreshing, too, to see a different style vault. She's facing the board. The table goes straight over two times around in pike position and just gorgeous in the air. Air just has to hold on to that landing. She's I, she's already got, I, I would say this is gonna it. be nine, nine, eight, certainly, or a better. Oh, oh, we got it! The first perfect 10 in the history of the Nastia Lucan Cup goes to Haley Bryant at a big moment. Wow, that's spectacular. Love to see that. Someone ought to tell her she doesn't need she to go. <laughs> I want to see it again, though, so yeah. I, hope, I hope she does go again. You know, I talked to Jay Clark, the, the associate head coach at LSU, where Haley Bryant's going to go, and I asked him about her, and she said, he said she's as athletic and powerful as they come. Another great vault. I don't think she knows. I haven't seen them flash a score anywhere in the arena. I see that vault, and I think one and a half twist laid out. Oh, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good for you. 
chasing perfection. And we finally have it right here, the perfect 10. Great bounce. Look at, look at how Just high she is. Stunning. And yes, there is that adjustment, but remember, in the junior program, starts from a 10.1. And, and quite honestly, that was the only mistake. So from a 10.1, you go to a 10.0. Thank you. I agree with you. I didn't think they were gonna go that high on that one. I thought they were gonna make her do two and perfectly stick the second one. You know, she qualified, as we mentioned, in one of the qualifying competitions, she did get a 10.0. A so we've made history here tonight. That's pretty Let's exciting. Go, it's about time, right? <laughs> and she's, Let's you know, go, right, you looking it. at making a little more history with one Come more on, event Ryan. to go. Yep, again, Trying she would her be- second title. Yep, she would be the first, already the first to get a 10. Gabby Perea, a very good 9.7, but with 10, 10 O's are going over here on vault. Yeah, but that's beam that right is. there, 9.7 on beam. Nice. Kaylee Bryan has to finish the competition on the uneven bars. Gabby Perea, who certainly will be in the mix, she will go to floor on, exercise Andy. to finish up. And now Andrea Lee. This is her fifth Nastia Cup. She's a regular. We just expect to see her here. I know, you know, at, every the, year. at the brunch today, we I, I like to always start by going around the room and kind of getting to know the girls, but also for the girls to get to know each other. So I, you know, always ask for, for their name, where they're from, what Nasty Living Cup this is. <laughs> and of course, for her, it was she she trumped everybody by being here for the fifth time. I was actually at the Chicago style meet where she qualified, saw her after the competition, big smile on her face and knowing she's coming back here again. She's got a lot of pink leotards. She, she <laughs> it has almost the whole collection. Very nice and incredibly solid as well on that back handspring step out to lay out step out. Oh, this is gorgeous. And you know, you don't see that nowadays in women's gymnastics. They really have to jam pack at the elite level so many element after element, and you don't get to see moves like that too often. It really just has a calmness to her on the balance beam. Looks like she's doing the skills as if she was just on the floor exercise. Went for that stick, not quite, but beautiful routine. Coming over to get a hug from coach and dad. <laughs> My good friend, Lee Yue Joe. He was one of the most powerful gymnasts that I've ever seen. And you know, as I said, just it's really hard to tumble on a balance beam that's four, in four inches wide, but she just does it with such calmness, such, such ease, and just kind of floats in the air. Double twist. Almost held on, takes that one little quick step. I think they're gonna call that just one step, though. And you know what, though? It, this, this competition is shaping up like those, and you mentioned it, Nasty, those little steps are gonna come back and haunt somebody when this thing is all over. Well, look at that though, 9.8. You know, obviously the gymnastics is, is getting better and better, but I think the judges are also warming up just a little bit as, as the competition goes on. I think you're exactly right. I did think that first rotation, I'm like, wow, these I, I'm used to remember these scores being a little bit higher and maybe they just need to exactly. loosen up that pen and pencil a little bit. So our leader after two rotations was JC Vohr. She competed on the bars, and this is what happened moments ago. We have got a battle. JC Vore at 9.675. She was in first place after two rotations. 
We'll see how this shakes off because so far the third rotation, it's all about Haley Bryant. The young lady makes history on the vault. The first perfect 10 at a nasty Lucan Cup. Your leader partway through the third rotation here at the Nasty Lucan Cup is Haley Bryant. Outstanding vault gets the first perfect 10 in the history of this event. She will finish on the uneven bars, but right now she has a lot of reasons to smile. But she's still got work to do. She is currently leading by 0 .075, which is a very tight race. Here's one more look at perfection. And explain to everybody again, Nastia, why she does take a little movement of the foot, but it's still a 10-0. Well, because this fault specifically right here starts out of a 10.1. So basically, the judges looked at it and said, out of that 10.1, there's one 10 deduction, 10.1 minus, minus one, there's your 10.0. Hey, I'm not going to argue. And I don't think Haley Bryant would argue with that either. Very well deserved. So again, we are still in the third rotation. Her future teammate at LSU is Olivia Dunn, and the scouting report on her from Jay Clark is she possesses a line and a style that is elegance per personified. He actually said that these two are perfect yin and yang. One is the power athlete, and one is the elegance athlete, and that would be Olivia Dunn right here. And again, Jay Clark being the associate head coach at their future college, LSU. Let's go, Liv! teammate that gives her a little smile. <laughs> I did talk to them about going to LSU together and they're excited to be roommates. We'll see how we'll get a we'll get a report after one year on how that goes. But they said they can't believe how quick it's coming up. They go to school June 8th. They start classes. They get there early and take some classes before the season even starts. So college right around the corner for these young ladies. I gotta think Nastia, waiting for the judges on all the events is difficult, but beam, it's gotta be the worst. I, I was just about to say, I don't think there's really anything you can do or say to completely remain calm when it feels like those 30 seconds or even 60 seconds. Sometimes it just feels like it could be 10 minutes. Yeah, it's so hard to fill your head and not come up with a negative thought. If you can keep those negative thoughts out, that's the key. And again, Olivia Dunn in ten, a tie for 10th place coming into this balance beater team. She looked a little off on me to me on, on that first leap, but was able to still hold it together and connect the next one. Nice job. Dismount. Very nice combination, backhand during step out to a full and a half, and I, I guess I have to agree with Jay Clark. Pr pretty calm, good stuff, boys. <laughs> Elegance, <laughs> they gotta be happy getting these two young ladies. Dude, your vote. And here was the big moment, and this is one of the biggest in a young athlete's career signing day. Very, very exciting. <laughs> Tim, do you remember yours? Well, I, I actually do. It was it was a long time ago, black and white TV, and you know. Of course. I think I remember mine too. My dad was my coach and he said, hey, here, sign this. <laughs> and there you and go. And then get back to practice. And look at that very nice beam score, 9.775, trying to keep her hopes alive. She's got some work to do, may need some help from the other competitors to get up into that top spot, but she's doing her job. <laughs> So here we have Nikki Smith tied for eighth place after the second rotation. Five tenths separating her from the top spot. Competed on 
Larch aside and vault. Here she goes on bars. A little unorthodox running underneath that low bar. Have you seen that before? Nice net, come on! Great handstand right there. Go net. Nice net! Come on, Nikki! Little short on that last handstand. Big step back on the dismount. You know, sometimes they're, they're just events that you want to get through. You want to land on your feet. For her, perhaps, getting even bars was one of those. That was every event for me, Nastia. <laughs> just get me through this. <laughs> so back over on the junior side, someone that we were very excited to see, a very happy Zoe Malomo. She has not had a great competition, however, this evening, but this is what her floor routine looked like moments ago. choreography, great tumbling, maybe a, f a future viral moment in a college <laughs> floor team to come for her. 9.475 for the 11-year-old Zoe Malomo. A high point in an otherwise somewhat rough competition, but she still has one event to go. And Nikki Smith, 9.325, obviously an event to go, but that is gonna make it very difficult for her to catch the leaders. Now Shea Campbell tied for 13th place. Started off on the uneven bars with a 9.2 and just been trying to dig out of that. Put up a 9.625 on balance beam and hoping to make another move upward here on floor.
I'd say super solid. You know, great air time on that first tumbling pass, that double back, and a lot of good stuff there. A lot of great athletes in the Campbell family. Calais Campbell, Shea's uncle, is a defensive end, most recently for the Jacksonville Jaguars. 88 sacks in his career. I want to see him get up on that floor exercise. <laughs> Now, Isabella Magnelli, 18 years old, teammate of Olivia Dunn. Is in 16th place coming into this rotation. Will attend the University of Kentucky next year. Oh, boy. Now on four for Twin City Twisters, Olena Teets. And that is much more like it. Great series right there, two layout step outs. One of my favorite series on the balance beam. recovery after that first skill. The scouting report from head coach Tim Garrison at Kentucky is Isabella is a great mix of power and flexibility and one of the sweetest girls you ever meet. And I have to say I had a chance to talk to her before the competition and she is an outstanding person you can tell. This was gorgeous. She struggled on that front aerial but nothing but perfect right here. Two layout step outs in a row, and you can't be more square and online than that. Ended with a round off, one and a half twist. Looking for the ground here. Right. Just a tiny hop. And I have to agree with you, John. You know, I, again, getting to know the girls over the last few days. I was like, yeah. great score, by the way. <laughs> I know. 9.7 for her. It's a huge wobble at the beginning of the routine. Shea Campbell, an impressive 9.8. He rocked that one. Yeah, the rotation is certainly finishing strong. But rotation number three belongs to Haley Bryant. She is in the lead, but it is a close one. Just a .075 lead over J.C. Vore. In one of the most competitive Nastia Lucan Cups in recent memory, after three, it's tight, but it's Haley Bryant's meet to win as we speak right now. She will be on the uneven bars, JC Vore. In second place, she will go over to the balance beam. It's going to be a good one. And the great part about this competition is there's been so many fun athletes to watch, but there's been athletes that have gone on to greatness on the international floor as well, Nastia. And this one might have been my favorite one, 2010. Nasty Lugan Cup, Gabby Douglas. Pretty much her coming out party here. Big routine right there. Had a such a great competition here. But then, of course, we remember her going on to winning Olympic all around gold just a few years later. So that's what I always say. You never know who's going to come out of here. And a moment that we'll never forget in Nasia Lugan Cup history oh. is young Morgan Hurd. Obviously, she went on to win the World Championships in 2017. We talked to her in Milwaukee, and here's what she had to say about the Nastia Lucan Cup. Oh my God, the Nastia Lucan Cup was just such an amazing experience. It was my first kind of really big meet, first one on podium under like the bright lights, huge crowd, but it was so much fun. Uh, I got to meet so many gymnasts from across the U.S., and that was great. I still have friendships from that today. And just like the overall experience was just such a fun time, getting uh, to have brunch with Nastia and talk to the girls, and the competition was just really fun. Everyone's cheering for each other. You get the Leo, you get the apparel. It's um, an amazing experience. My favorite moment is Nasty when you interviewed her. You've never looked so tall. And I had to take my <laughs> shoes off. <laughs> Here are some of the star alumni. We mentioned Gabby, we mentioned Morgan Hurd, but also Michaela Skinner, world champion Maggie Nichols as well. Ashton Locklear was also an alternate on the Olympic team. Two of those gymnasts right there are in contention to go to Tokyo. Michaela Skinner and Morgan Hurd. 
That's pretty remarkable, and we certainly will be keeping close tabs on that. But right now, we're going to keep close tabs on Haley Bryant. First place after three rotations, the fourth and final rotation coming up from Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the Nasty Lucan Cup. Here we go, the fourth and final rotation. Gabby Perea will get things started. She's in sixth place after three. She will finish her competition up on the floor exercise. She comes off a very good 9.7 on balance beam, trying to keep her hopes alive. She's about four and a half tenths out of the lead. Just absolutely gorgeous. From the tumbling to the artistry to the choreography, the presentation. Yeah, I, I loved that. That was a joy to watch. And she had a great competition. You know, the one part that, that kind of let her down a little bit is, is the event that she's so good on bars. It just gave away a few tents that might make the difference for her when this thing is all said and done. When the competition is just so close, especially in that 10.0 scoring system, you know, as we've said, basically after every single rotation, every score is just so close. And here's that combination pass that she did. Front tuck to a double full, beautiful. Just, and even the landing, the finishes, just everything. I could go on and on. Well, watch the power here. Great position on the landing. You know, when she was an elite gymnast, much younger, she was one of the best in the world. The last pass on the 9.575, so Gabby Perea will lead the all around for now. She's got a 38.525 for her total. And we will let you know what each of these athletes needs as we go. And now your leader after three, Haley Bryant, the meet on the line. A bit shy on that handstand, yeah? That's good right there, just the dismount. She only needs better than a 9.125 to take the lead. Certainly that's gonna be enough for that right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. But then Ab she's gonna have to sit back and yeah. wait. <laughs> it was very good, very good. She had a couple of handstands that weren't perfect. But you know, sometimes that's what happens when you're playing it a little bit safe, you know you need to be almost perfect to end up on top. Well, you never played it safe, Nastia. <laughs> so now back to back, first Haley Bryant, who is in the lead, now JC Vore. She was just .075 behind Bryant. And again, Bryant trying to become the first gymnast to ever win two Nastia Lucan Cups. And won't be back to back, she won in 2018, but still, she'd be the first to win two. Here we go. Gorgeous. The one thing that Haley has to be worried about, in addition to what JC can do here, is that beam scores have been a little bit higher. I would say overall, especially as the meet wore on, than we saw on the uneven bars.
being told she needs a 9-8-5 to get into the lead. That's a huge score. <laughs> Oh, nicely done. Beautiful in the air, but a big hop on the landing. 985, John. That is a tall order. And I, I don't know if that can happen here. That, that would be the biggest score on the balance beam. And the reason that she needs that 9.85 is because of that right there. 9.775 on the even bars. That is the top score for any athlete on that event Nine, in this competition Ryan. so far. That gives her a 39.175, which is a gigantic all-around score. Nice job. But you know, way to go, JC, because she knew she needed to do an excellent beam routine. And, and going to beam as your very last event, knowing that you have to hit, that's a lot of pressure. JC is verbally committed to Arkansas. 9.8. Oh. Wow, you, it was that hop on the landing. Nastia, we talked about it. You mentioned it right away. The little things, the little steps, and lo and behold, when it's all said and done as we speak right now, that's the difference. Wow, but Haley Bryant, she's got two things. She's the first perfect 10 and a repeat winner here at the Nastia Lukin Cup. Wow, what a day. The other young lady competing here that has won this event is Andrea Lee, fifth place after the third rotation. Obviously, podium spots still in play for these athletes. Andrea won this as a junior back in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> and a great routine. Love the choreography, the music, beautiful tumbling as well. Yeah. Very interesting choreography from these legacy elite gymnasts. So we're seeing history again here from Andrea Lee, guys. Five times she's been here. No more. This is her final, this is her curtain call, final time at the Nastia Lucan Cup. And it's been an amazing career from here, and we're certainly excited to see her and this compete is, in college. This is brand new for her uber difficult, full twisting double somersault, and she'll keep her legs straight throughout the entire thing. The first one is laid out right here, and then she pikes her body. That is a lot of gymnastics. Really good stuff right there. And ends with a two and a half twist. So lay out two and a half twist, and you see blind landing there too. Does a nice little arabesque out of it to try to avoid any deductions on the landing. Andrea Lee's 9.8 to finish out an outstanding day. Congratulations, young lady. Ninth place after the third rotation.
gorgeous floor routine, that choreography. Just didn't quite have the power, the strength, the endurance at the very end, that middle to wing pass as well, but. Yeah, that was a little scary, actually. The, the coach had a map there for her to land on. You know, you're tired at the end of a floor routine like that. She really dances, so, you know, it, it wins you. And, you know, that mat is not a deduction. It's allowed, but I think because she was so fatigued, she didn't, she didn't really have enough power to get all the way into the corner. And here's that opening tumbling pass. So we, a front tuck into a double back, so difficult combination, a lot of skills in one pass. You see, pretty good landing. But I think just a little tired at the end here. This is probably the hardest pass too. Double pike somersault, and she is pulling as hard as she can. She actually does make it to the mat, sorry. I thought she... You were wrong, Tim. I was. <laughs> the angle we were watching definitely looked like... Still gonna get a good score though, yep. Olivia Dunn started off on vault and built every score throughout the competition. Last rotation, we saw that 9.775 on balance being the highlight for her and she finishes with a 9.45 here on floor exercise. So now 14 year old Samantha Makasu will finish out here on floor exercise. 11th place coming into this fourth rotation. Fun routine there, as as you mentioned, the legacy elite athletes just having unique and fun choreography. We are going to see more of the juniors in the next segment, but right now, in this first half of the fourth rotation, it's all about Haley Bryan makes history twice, the only two-time champ at the Nastia Lucan Cup, and the only one ever to get a 10.0. We are celebrating International Women's Day here at NBC with an all women's broadcast and production crew. It's gonna be a great show, Blues versus Blackhawks. And I do believe we have three Olympic champions on that crew as well. Do not miss it, it will be outstanding. So we are back for the second half of the fourth and final rotation. Gymnasts are just warming up on this halfway point. And we're just looking at the junior competition. We had an incredible senior competition, came right down to the wire. But this junior competition might top it, Nastia. I mean, this is what is so exciting. It always comes down to that final event, the last rotation, the last gymnast. This is what I love so much about it. You, you just don't know what's gonna happen. Well, the top four are separated by five one hundredths of a point. That's a, small, that's a smaller deduction than the judges can take. So it, this is as tight as you can literally get. And it's still tight after that. And we're gonna see Kylie Rorich start this rotation off. And we're gonna get a chance to see all four of those leaders that Tim mentioned, all within a half a tenth. 
Kylie needs a 9.45 here on the balance beam to take the lead for the moment. But again, some tight competition coming up right behind her. So Nastia, you ever been in a situation like this as a young gymnast? I'm sure you have. Junior competing at a big stage like this, with this on the line, a title, the biggest title I would have to say that this young lady will ever have if she can get it done. What kind of pressure is that? You know, it's, it's definitely a lot of pressure, a lot of nerves, but I think at the same time, it's you have to think about it as an opportunity. You know, she's here, there's, as we kind of mentioned, there's nowhere really else to go from here. They've all qualified here, and, and that's what I shared with them all this morning. I said, I know everybody wants to win, you know, but don't put that kind of pressure on yourself here today. Try to use this as an experience for your future, for the rest of your career. She actually looks pretty calm, smiling. It's a very good sign, I would say. And here we go with the 10th grader from Southeastern Gymnastics Center. Just 15 years old. Combination right here, nicely done. You saw that smile before she even <laughs> finished. She knew she was spot on. You know, there's always that one skill in your beam routine towards the end that if you can just kind of get through, then it's kind of, you're, you're cruising and you see that smile again on her face. She. What was it for you? Unfortunately, mine wasn't until my very last <laughs> skill, <laughs> my switch ring. Double full, nice landing, just a small step. Oh. <laughs> and mind you, she is walking off the podium a mere 20 feet from someone I would expect is one of her role models and idols, Nastia Lukin, at a, an event that she may, may just have won the all around at. Pretty exciting moment. <laughs> Front somersault right here. Nicely done, just a little bit of a step, but. Here's that acro, the series, back handspring, back layout. Take a look at her face right here. Smile before <laughs> she's done. And a huge 9.675. The second highest score for a junior. <laughs> Today's competition and a timely one. Now Rebecca Smith will be the next gymnast to go. And you mentioned how close the top four are, Tim, but Rebecca Smith is in a tie for seventh. She's only two tenths out of the top spot. Crazy. Nice back dive to a handstand. Very popular mount at this level and especially on the elite level. Gymnasts all over the world use that. Rebecca needs to be almost perfect here to take the lead. Needs a 9.85 or better. Little off. Just doesn't quite seem like she has that confidence, a little nervous, timid on every single skill. There's another little bit of an adjustment. In a good routine, she stayed on a few 
few too many wobbles there will be a lower score, but great way to end the competition. Probably not going to be that 9.85 she needs, but the podium again still in play for her. But the you know, I think more than any any Red score, any placement, being able job. to finish your competition with a smile as big as that is success. And here's that mount, Tim, you were talking about. Little bitty leg separation there, but that's a long way back for her. <laughs> yes, it is. That mount's insane. I'm not I, sure what. I don't think how I do could do ever that? do that. How do you do that the first time? 9.55 for Rebecca Smith. I think you cross your fingers a little bit. <laughs> so now we're going to move over to the uneven bars. Holly Snyder. She is in the mix as well. She was in that fourth spot coming into this rotation. A 9.7 or better will put her into first place. Looking for handstands. That's what the judges are looking for. Oh boy, and that was really fingertips, huh? The recovery a little short on that handstand, though. It's same there. Everything just seems a little rushed. So just be a little more patient. Yeah. Nice double pike and a great stick. That's probably the highlight of the routine, I would say. You know, sometimes it's hard to recover when when one of your earlier skills in the is a little bit off. It's it's just kind of like a domino effect. You have to take a reset almost. Holly, just a ninth grader out of Doc Siders Gymnastics in Annapolis, Maryland. So looking for handstands. And also, nice release, but she's a, got a little funky on that. I thought she might have even come off the bar. Yeah, didn't quite get that swing high enough back, and you see, a little hard to tell, but just wasn't quite as, as good as she's probably yeah. used to seeing it. Threw her off a little bit. And that handstand really short right there, but this dismount. Gorgeous. I'm not gonna say it, Tim, but we're all thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> The highest score on bars in this competition for juniors is a 9.5, and 9.175 will be the final score for Holly Snyder today. Not quite enough to get in that first spot, obviously. But Raina Light, she was your leader after three. She needs a 9.65 or better here on this bar routine to stay in the top spot. A little bit of form on that release from high to low. A little short too, that handstand a little short too. I know we're being picky, but so are the judges. Full twisting double, step on the landing. It's a nice routine, but it, wow, it, it kind of opens the door. So now our final competitor in this vault rotation is Zoe Johnson. We saw her on Evening Bar. She was so much fun to watch. She has just been battling all day. And here she is. She's tied for second. This is her vault. Zoe Johnson. You know, and that's a pretty good vault. <laughs> <laughs> I remember at some point in my life being, being that small, and it just feels like it's impossible to even get over that vaulting table, let alone get the power that you need off the table. I, I can't believe that she can generate this power. You know, being able to compress the board enough, I think if she gets a little bit more through on her round off, she'll be able to get to the table a little quicker and maybe get a little more height, won't have to close her hip angle. So a 9.4, not enough so far. She needs to do a little bit better here. She's got, a, she's got a stable one in the bank, but she knows she needs better right here. The most obvious thing is going for the stuck landing, but also keep the body extended throughout from start to finish right here. Oh, boy. And you know, <laughs> I didn't know she was going to do that. I was going to say on the table, it, was, it looked it was so much better. It was way better, absolutely. She went for it, though, did the harder vault. 
I don't know if she really needed the harder vault. She's a determined one, though, that's for sure. So look at the extension right there. Definitely a lot better, but didn't quite get the rotation she needed. Mm. But oh. a bright future ahead. Oh, for sure. golly. Great, great stuff. Got to give her credit for going for that. And man, if I had to pick one word to describe Zoe Johnson, it would be fierce. <laughs> yeah, she is tiny, but she is fierce. Raina Light score 9.325 for her. Not enough to catch Kylie Rorich. That puts her into sixth place. What a competition, though, today. Seniors in that last segment were unbelievable, and then the juniors finishing this out. Some great personalities, and you got to wonder, are we going to see Zoe Johnson again someday, and are we going to be talking about her as one of those famous faces that we saw her that time? Yeah, we, I remember 2020 Nastia Cup. We could certainly be doing that. She is a competitor, that's for sure. Not going to get the number that she wants on vaulting, but... There is your senior winner, Haley Bryant, her future teammate at LSU. Olivia Dunn enjoying the moment, both of them. Andrea Lee and Gabby Perea going to Cal Berkeley is going to be a dynamic duo. These two are going to be an amazing duo going to LSU, and you can see them giving you the, the tiger sign right there. You call some of those meets, don't you, John? I do, and they're a lot of fun, and they are exciting. LSU always in the mix for SEC championship national titles as well, and their future clearly is bright. Kylie Rorich currently your leader as we wait for a final couple scores to come in. Got to get the photo up. Yep. They're, they're not sitting still on Instagram. A team photo of sorts. They're not on the same team, but today it was almost like they were, and the, the score's in. Rorich gets the win for the juniors. That beam routine was enough, a 38.225, and that smile we saw, that was the smile of the 2020 junior champion here at the Nastia Lucan Cup. What a moment for her. Haley Bryant, Kylie Rorich are your champions. Nastia Lukin, going to get a chance to talk with her when we come back. Welcome back to the Pfizer Forum here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it was a historic night at the 2020 Nastia Lukin Cup. Haley Bryant, the first athlete to win two. She gets the senior title. And Kylie Rorich, in exciting fashion, one of the tightest competitions in the juniors. She gets the title there. And our own Nastia Lukin caught up with both of these all-around champions. First of all, congratulations. You're already getting your medals here <laughs> in the middle of this interview. Perfect. Um, first of all, take us back to that vault. Did you know after you landed that you were going to get a 10.0? I mean, I kind of heard you, Tim, and John talking over there. And so we broke the news, basically. I know, but I was just focused on I had to do one more vault and just to do the same as I did. So not only did you make history once by getting that first 10.0 at the Nasty Lucan Cup, but twice you were the first ever gymnast to win two titles. How does that feel? It's amazing because it's my last one. I just wanted to go out there one skill at a time, one routine at a time, and all my hard work paid off. So. Congratulations, and for you, it came down to the very last event. Tell us what was going through your mind, especially on that routine. Well, I was very nervous. Beam is not my best event. I usually struggle on beam, actually. So I was just like, I gotta take it one skill at a time. I just need to breathe. That's what I always tell myself, just breathe every skill, and I'll be okay. So I was very shocked at the end of my beam routine that I even made it, and I was really happy. Well, congratulations, Kylie and Haley. Back to you, John. Thanks, Nastia. Quite a night, Tim, for Haley Bryant. Oh, man, and it was capped off with this. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. The power, the height, she is flying. Gravity does not apply. 
We will get four more years of Haley Bryant. She's going on to LSU. And here's her bar routine as well. Yeah, she was just so solid through the entire event. Nice double front dismount, the smallest itsy bitsy step. But wow. Again, an historic night for Haley Bryant. She's got the she's got the medal. She gets it done, that 10-0 on vault, and you can see Kylie Rorich right there. I don't think there's a bigger smile in Pfizer form than the smile on Kylie Rorich's face, and you could tell right when she came off of that podium. And she conquered one of her one of her demons. She says that she gets nervous on beams, so that was awesome for her. So congratulations to those of both of those young ladies. Thank you for watching the 2020 Nastia Lucan Cup. Congratulations to Haley Bryant, Kylie Rorich. For our producer, she's amazing. Alexa Ainsworth, you're outstanding. For Nastia Lucan and Tim Daggett, I'm John Roethlisberger. So long, everybody from Milwaukee.